Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about singing. In fact, we're going to be talking about 10 different reasons why we should be singing. That is next. We talk about the church, family, theology, and even entertainment. In fact, if it's Christian, we're talking about it. This is the Mike Charleston Show. All right, welcome to the Mike Charleston Show. I am Mike Charleston. I'm joined today... Uh, wait, yeah, this is the Mike Charleston show. <laughs> they got me so worried now saying the show podcast. I don't know what it is. Where are you watching show podcast? This, I am Mike Charleston and Chuck is, Chuck Tate is with me today. Hey everybody. And Sarah, my wife. Hey everybody. All right. And today we got a good show for you. We are going to be talking about singing. That's right. We're not going to sing about no, singing. No, we are not going to be okay. singing. I was so looking forward to hearing you sing. Uh, well, I just did. So... <laughs> So we're going to be talking about singing. This is this is going to be called the Sarah Show because this was Sarah's idea, and she really put together most of the show. And she likes to sing. She's very passionate about this subject. I do love to sing. I think everybody should love to sing. And you're going to find out. So we're going to give you ten reasons why you should sing to the to the yep. Lord specifically, right? right? Yeah. I mean, you should sing in general, but we're not saying you should sing like. Uh, I don't even know Justin Bieber songs or anything like that. Right. I don't. I don't know any worldly people. I, I was drawing a blank. <laughs> so, anyway, we are going to be talking about singing. So why don't we go ahead and get into it? So what do we have for us, babe? Well, first I looked up "sing" in the Bible, which yes, is actually did. a bunch of times in there. And so I have all the different times "sing" and "singing" and "sang" and "sung" and "singeth" is mentioned. Yes, if you have the King James, "singeth" is a word. Right. And so "sing" is in there 119 times, and we're going to read all 119 verses. Just kidding. <laughs> so get your Bibles That's and right. follow along. <laughs> and singing is in there 29 times. "Sang" is 12. "Sung" five, and "singeth" one. So "sing" is in the Bible a good bit. What we did not do. Right. I was going to say we missed some other things like praise and rejoice. Rejoice. Other words that would have to do with singing. We didn't include those. Yes, and we'll get into that as we get into the show. But this is specifically the subject of singing. And that is in the Bible. We didn't add it up completely, but off the top of my head, it looks like 167, 68 times, something like that. Wow, that's quick math. I wonder if you're right. I don't know. That's okay. 119 (laughs) plus 29 plus 12 plus 5 plus 1. Uh, we'll figure that out. Josh will probably put that in post and say we got it wrong. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so... 166. Is it? right. You added? Mm-hmm. Okay, 166. Wow, mm-hmm. I got Bang! it. Yeah, wow. how about that? Uh, did I say 166? Okay. <laughs> I think okay. you said 66, 67, okay. so you're close. Close enough. Yeah. Hey, you discovered good. yourself. So singing is a very, very important thing that that, that Christians, I think... I believe should do, and and if I want to, if I could just start off, just so you can get an insight in our household, just a little bit, is that my wife and my girls, specifically my girls, my boys, somewhat, and me, somewhat, uh, more than the average, you know, average bear, but we sing a lot. We do. We sing, and and a lot of people think, well, you just listen to music. No, we do that too. Yeah. If you've traveled with us, you know we we listen to a lot of music, but we sing more than we listen, probably, right? Probably. When you're yeah. doing dishes, when you're cleaning, when we're just not when we're talking to each other, that that wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> we don't sing to each other, but then, when, in fact, we do. We know how to play instruments, so we go downstairs and we will just sing. We'll, we'll right. put put our instruments together and and practice and, and sing. So this is something that we do a lot of in our house, and I think it's very important in most houses. Now, Chuck, I don't know about your house. How often? I'm going to put you on the spot here. Put me on the spot, sure. Yeah. How often do you guys just sing? I, I'm not saying like a formal time of sit down and sing. Most people probably don't do that. But how often are you singing throughout the day? Does Jeannie and the kids singing throughout the day? Probably not a whole lot. Okay. Not, not as much as if we stop and thought about it, we probably would want to. Okay, sure, Don't sure. make it, you know, and I talk about that word intentional. It's yeah, not right. intentional. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, in times past, we probably had done it more than we do today. Sure. Um, and that's probably just letting life get too busy. Sure. Yeah. Well, I do know if I come upstairs when you guys are washing dishes, I tend to interrupt and then we talk a lot. But if I am out of the picture, and I, I actually enjoy this myself, because I enjoy listening. I'm not a very good singer, but I will get into that and in, uh, way down the line here. That's no excuse. But the I enjoy listening to you guys sing. I, and during this time when they're doing the Bible beat, they are quoting scripture and they're singing. 
not singing the scripture necessarily, but you guys are singing and quoting. And so when I walk into my home, it's constantly being filled with scripture and singing. I mean, what more would you want, honestly? It's pretty nice. So we've broken it down to 10 reasons. But before we get down into the 10 reasons, babe, why don't you go ahead? There are two major verses we're going to be focusing on. Right. So the first one is Ephesians 5, 18 and 19 says... And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. There you go. And then we have Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Those are like the two New Testament verses on singing, and obviously the Psalms are filled with it, right. but in the New Testament, these are like the two you go to verses, you, you know, right. on singing, and these are good ones, uh, absolutely. So we're going to be covering these two verses quite a bit, and other ones too, but we're going to refer back to the Colossians and the Ephesians right. verse. So when we say back in Colossians or back in Ephesians, that is what we're going to be referring to. So what helps us to sing? You got a thing here that comes from Colossians. What is it that helps us to sing? Well, letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly, yeah, as it says, right. and and it's true when you, you know, a lot of times even with the girls and they're memorizing scripture, and it reminds me of songs. It does that absolutely. They start singing. So. There are so many verses as you're reading the Bible. It reminds me of a song. Right. There's so many times we're doing Bible study. I'm like, mm, I can't just say it. I want to mm-hmm. sing it, but I'm not going to sing it because I'm not a very good singer. Uh, which you don't then believe. he does it anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, babe, sing it. <laughs> but Or uh, even not scripture that you know, but you sing songs and then it reminds you of scripture. So right. like it yeah. kind of goes both ways. It does, it does. And in fact, singing actually has a unique quality about it where I think you can remember songs a lot more than just a passage of something. Yeah, it's something that whenever you have those words set to music, you, yep. it, it creates a, a memory that you can't otherwise get. It's easier to memorize things that way. It do, and In fact, it happened to me the other day. We were out somewhere eating, and I hadn't heard this song in 30 years. It's some secular song. I don't even remember what it was. We were at the IHOP because we're classy, and they were playing something overhead, and I was immediately... I know the hook. Now, I probably don't remember the whole song, but you know the main chorus. They don't call it a chorus, the main hook. And immediately, I could, I haven't heard it for 30 years. Why is that? You know? Yeah, I had the same thing last week. We, uh, Jeannie and I had gone out to eat. Um, We weren't at IHOP. You know my feelings about IHOP. (laughs) But (laughs) we were at Applebee's. I'm getting there. (laughs) And um, a Cindy Lauper song. It's like, that's 30 years, right? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. It might have been a Cindy Lauper song. (laughs) So anyway, we have Psalm 105.2. It says, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Absolutely. So sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Now that is something that I think we as Christians in America, 21st century, we don't do. We don't sing the Psalms. Now, maybe some Jewish Christians, maybe they do, but we've tried to put the Psalms to, to music and they usually bomb. Some of them work really well. Some of them. But yeah, like we have a whole CD don't. on Psalm 119. 119. Mm-hmm. Right. It's all music. Yeah. And, yeah. and it does the There's whole actually, uh, actually a friend of ours from uh, uh, Meadville, Mississippi, okay. who yep. actually did that, who yep. made that CD okay. and did Susie Psalm, Kimbrough. Susie Kimbrough put yeah. Psalm 119 to music. And yeah, Jeannie and the kids actually know most of those. Because so, of that. Because of that. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's a nice help. It does help. But we don't really, most of our praise and worship songs, it's either praise and worship songs or hymns. We don't know what to do with the Psalms. And a lot of our songs that we come up with come from the Psalms, but it actually isn't just the Psalm. You know what I'm saying? It it doesn't really just go to the Psalm. But it does say, say, sing songs unto him, talk ye of his wondrous works. So we're not just supposed to just preach and talk and teach. We're supposed to sing these things. Uh, It's kind of amazing. All right, babe, what do we got here? James 5.13. It says, is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing psalms. Now, this is an interesting verse here. Right? This doesn't seem to be connected in some way. It's like, is any of you afflicted? So what do you mean by afflicted? You know, if you're sick, if you're hurt. That's what you would think of, hurting, first of all. You're brought down. Just troubled for some reason. Right. So you shouldn't pray when you're happy, evidently, because it says you should sing when you're happy. No, I'm just kidding. You, you, you probably should pray too. But it's but honestly, it says here, 
if you're afflicted, you should pray. But if you're merry, now, how many of you are merry? Now, Mary's happy. It's, it's, and we had this conversation about a lot of people say they're joyful, mm-hmm. but they don't really show it. You it's know? the hidden joy. It's the hidden joy. <laughs> and I don't care who you are. Eventually, if you're joyful, you're going you're gonna to smile. It's going right. to come out. But if you're joyful and you're happy, you're going to be merry. And when you're merry, you sing. You do. Yeah. You know, it, uh, w- some of the people in the old days when they go to the bars or the, the, I don't know what they called it back then, the, the pubs. Pubs, yep. Right, and they would sing and they got merry mm-hmm. and they'd start singing songs, right? right? And uh, because it makes you happy and they're already happy. But if you're merry, sing. So, all right. So we got that out of the way. Not that we need to get that out of the way. <laughs> but what do we have here? Why does the Bible tell us to sing? You've come up with 10 reasons. Now, we were going to come up with nine, but... I'll let you know which one we were going to throw out, but... Uh, we don't have that one in there. Oh, you changed that one? Yeah. Okay, you threw that one out. We did throw it. So we did keep 10. We added another one. But 10 just makes sense. We got to have 10. Yeah, you don't like the number 9, right? At 9 yeah. just is like you're one short. Come on. <laughs> so anyway, 10 reasons to sing. All right, Bay, why don't you go ahead? Okay, well, the first reason is it helps us to remember. So it helps us remember Scripture. It helps it, us to remember all the things that God has done for us when we sing. Thing. Kind of like what we were just talking about yeah. with right. the Bible Bee and just memorizing songs from 30 years ago. Right. Yeah. So, like, what about, what about commercials? Yeah. So, marketing obviously realizes that this is a thing. Yeah. They had so jingles. They had jingles. At least right. they used to have jingles. They did. They're not very many anymore. Right. I don't really watch commercials too much anymore. And I don't, there used to be a local commercial. Now, of course, I don't know it. So, I evidently it didn't work. But it was a roofing company, and they had their phone number, and you just knew it, the, the, the commercial because it was a jingle. It was on the radio. I remember one from New Orleans on Rose and Blooms. Okay. Rose and Blooms, Rose and Blooms, 1825, too late. There you go. Is it still wow. in business? No. Um, okay, I don't so think so. We're not giving them business, wow. so that's good. <laughs> but yeah, you, they are catchy. Yeah. They, and you remember? Yeah, uh, pretty much. I know many commercials from when I was a kid because they were songs, so they just stick with you. Yep. Yep. Things you heard from when you were a child? Um, like anything that was set to music when I was a kid, I tend to remember those things a like lot Like Happy better. Birthday? Yeah, like Happy Birthday. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's a good one. No, but uh, I don't know what you mean or by... Or like it. even I had teachers that would teach things through song. And oh, so sure, sure, you sure. Remember, you remember those things? Uh, I must not have had teachers that taught through songs. No, I don't remember oh, a teacher okay. that did that either. And maybe ABCs, maybe. Okay. Unless they were a music teacher. But that is true. <laughs> the music teacher. Okay, so why don't we move on to the next one. Number two... So the next one is singing produces joy, and joy produces singing. So this is the one you replaced. I did, This is yeah. what we talked about, and you finally replaced it. Because we did. We were going to be the last one. I'll just give you an inside. It was going to be practicing for heaven, and I thought, that's a little cheesy. But uh, are we practicing for heaven? But anyway, so number two. What was number two? That singing produces joy, and joy produces singing. So it kind of goes around. It, it does. Psalm 2, 9-2. Says, I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. Okay, so let's camp out here real quick. So, what did you mean by that? By the singing produces joy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I think that when you sing, I guess depending on what you sing, but True. it should be that when you We're sing. We're assuming you're singing to the Lord here. Right. right. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to have a bad attitude and be down when you're singing to God and singing of all the good things that he's done for you. Right. So it's going to make you happy. It's kind of like what Chuck said a couple weeks back, that it's hard to, what did you say? It's it, So I usually will say that if you don't feel like singing, sing. Well, that's right. Because yeah. you will. You right. know, yeah. Sing until you feel like it, because it will bring joy to you, and then you'll, you will begin to praise. Absolutely. Yeah. Like you said a couple weeks back, something about thankfulness, and you'd never known a person who was joyful that wasn't also thankful. Right. I think yeah. the same could be said where I don't know of someone who's joyful who doesn't like to sing. And yeah. I think they're all tied together. You're thankful, you're happy, you're joyful, and you want to sing about it. And the Jews like to sing a lot. They, they, they sang a good bit. And uh, that's why they have 150 psalms, or 150, 150? 150. 150. 150 psalms. You looked at me like, oh, did I miss a psalm in there? <laughs> but no. uh, they like to sing. So singing so, produces joy, right? Right. So this is the, the opposite, like we were talking about, you're, if you're joyful, you will sing. But if you actually begin singing with grace in your heart to the Lord, mm-hmm. you will become merry. So if you're down, if you're, if you're struggling with something, sing. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a proverb, right? A merry heart, do what's good, good like, like a medicine, medicine. Yeah. which once again, 
she's thinking of a song right now, and she's, <laughs> yeah. we're not going to sing it. No, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> we, may, we would sing that to the kids all the time when they were feeling down. Yeah. If they were had a bad attitude, and we would sing that verse, A yeah. Merry Heart, Doeth Good Like Medicine, and A Broken Spirit. Dries the bones. It does. So, Anyway, number three. It helps us to be Christ-minded. By meditating. Right, because, well, when you're singing things, the... The words that you're singing are going through your mind, so you're thinking about, again, everything that God is to you. And doing this research, I did a lot more studying on the psychological part and more of the physiological part and what the science behind singing was uh, while you were doing some of the more the, the Bible stuff, which is probably more important. But I was curious about what the world was saying about just singing in general, uh -huh. and there's a lot of benefits to singing. And one of the things that they noticed was that when you sing, your mind, everything is involved. Your mind, your, your thinking, your, uh, it's hard to think about other things when you're singing. You're, you're mm -hmm. thinking about this specific thing. And so it's kind of all inclusive. And so when you think about worship with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you are doing that when you are singing. You are yeah. singing, you're thinking about him with all your heart, mind, soul, and, and strength. Unless you you just know that song so much, you know, and this happens in church, you know, you open up the hymn to Amazing Grace. How many times have we sang a song Amazing Grace? You could probably do it in your sleep. And so some people just go through the motions right. of the, singing. You hear the music director sometimes will say, well, sing it like we mean it this time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Sing it like yeah. we mean it. And when you actually are involved in the right. actual singing of it, it, it does, you are consumed by it. So it yeah. is interesting. Uh, helps us be more Christ-minded. So you have a verse here, Psalm 1-2, chapter 1, verse 2. It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So that's a meditate verse. Right. It's good to meditate. Yeah. And there's many ways to meditate, right? I mean, you can meditate without using your mouth. There's a, there's a meditate where you just sit alone and just quote verses. And there's a way to meditate by singing. So there's yeah. many ways to meditate. Yeah. And Joshua 1.8. Says this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Yeah, and the one thing I like about meditating, and I know I said you had a lot to say, and so far you haven't had anything to say. So there's, especially with new songs, uh, with these new modern songs, uh, some of them are. I don't know them all, all, you know, I'm learning some of them, but there'll be a phrase that'll stick out and I'll just kind of sing that all day long. And, and, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, we just repeat in the same line. Well, you know, it's my meditation to get off my okay. back, but it's, uh, I'm just being meditated on that one phrase or that one portion. I don't sing the whole song and I can do that with a hymn too, but it's mainly with some of the newer songs that I'll think about that one that one line. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And just kind of sing that one line kind of over. I don't know if you do that. I don't do you do that? No. Okay. Okay. So that's it's just, just me. I kind of like to if I don't know the rest of the song, I go look up the lyrics Well, I that's probably why I do it cuz I don't know the rest of the oh, song. Okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just singing that one part I do know, yeah, <laughs> and I'm fair. like, eh, that's pretty interesting <laughs> lyric. Let me just keep singing that. <laughs> so anyway, maybe that's why. Um, I hum, remember? You do hum. I hum. You do. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> maybe he should have been the humdinger one <laughs> and, uh, for the game coming up. All right, number four. <laughs> number four is it can affirm solid doctrines. Okay, well, there's one caveat, though, right? You got to have the doctrines or no? <laughs> well, the, this, well, the songs, if they are, the songs right. are. Yeah. The songs yeah. are solid. Right. They can do that, right. Yeah. So... A examples. What are your examples here, babe? Well, so I put four down. I have Amazing Grace. It says, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. So obviously, I was a wretch. Good yeah. thing to know. Good thing to be reminded of. I'm not good enough. Right. None so. of us are good enough. That's right. a good reminder. Then I have, there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. Yeah, and some of these, when you know, especially these hymns, who were rich in poetry almost. Yeah. I mean, I'm not denigrating some of the newer songs, but the some of the poetry in the hymns is amazing. Like you could almost just preach a sermon on right. that, you yeah. know, drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And uh, uh, yeah, sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty saints. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another one. Um, how firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. That's kind of hard to... Say. Without yeah, just singing it. it. <laughs> 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 I feel like you want to sing that. 
Yeah, Mike does the dun dun. Yeah, the doo, doo, <laughs> yeah, doo, doo, he, he's fine with that. He just doesn't want to sing. No, not too much. Okay, and one more example. And I have sing, oh sing of my redeemer. With his blood, he purchased me. On the cross, he sealed my pardon, paid the debt, and made me free. Once again, that's hard to say. It doesn't sound yeah, right without I singing know. it. No. And um, but no, these are. They're full of solid doctrine. Yeah, right. a lot of the hymns are, are are very rich in doctrine. Absolutely, uh, and it gets down in you. Yeah, the more I feel like that some of the early uh, earlier contemporary Christian stuff didn't was, was very sure. weak in more doctrine. Campy. Yeah, yeah. It seems like in the past five six years or so, the the writers have gotten better at They're going back to, to right. yeah. actually get the doctrine into the songs. So. They're trying yeah. to, yes, yeah. Which, not always, but in, in yeah. some of the good ones. At least they, it seems like they're trying to. I would agree. And there's nothing wrong with campy songs. Like they call them the 7 Eleven songs. Um, and a lot of the old Baptists rejected the 7 Eleven songs. And I grew up with 7 Eleven songs. And if you don't know what 7 Eleven songs means, Chuck, what is it? I have no idea. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> Oh wow! I thought for sure you knew Seven Eleven. So Seven Eleven songs are you sing the same the same seven words eleven times. Oh okay. The Seven Eleven yeah. songs. So uh, we grew up with a lot of those. We did. And most of them were happy songs. You know, this is the day. This is the day. And and then you just repeat that over and over. And and then it goes into another. And they're campy. And but to me, I I don't have a problem with them necessarily. And we'll get into this next week probably. But the because it's still some good stuff in there. It, yes, it's very short, and it's like, are we going to be singing this all day long? But um, as long as it goes somewhere, I'm all right with yeah, it. Yeah, it, it is uplifting. It doesn't, you know, make the heart merry. But if that's all you sing, right? It can be, you know, like every once. It's it's kind of like a candy bar, right? It's good to have one of every those fun size. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but if that's what you live on, you're you're going to be Let's miserable. Let's not talk about fun size. Oh no. <laughs> it's not very fun. It's not very fun. <laughs> no. Whoever came up with fun size, that well, is a shame. I will say before you go to the next point that the affirming the solid doctrines is, I think, really important for parents or moms to do with their kids especially because I know when we sing hymns like we'll get the hymnals out sometime I haven't done this in a while but when you're singing through them you introduce a lot of big words like yesterday we were singing something and it had atonement and I was like wow how many songs today have atonement you know and a lot of those right. just easy songs today aren't, aren't going to have things like that but there's a lot of things that um, I don't know you expand their vocabulary where they are going to ask about things that are deep Sure, so. sure. And it's a good conversation starter, if yeah. anything. Yeah. And that has happened many times yeah. in our house. Our kids think a good bit. And so, anyway, number five. Number five is obey God's command. So back to Ephesians 5 and Colossians 3 we mentioned earlier. Yes, <laughs> so obey God's command, right? So it's not a matter of talent. So like I said, I'm not a very talented singer, but it doesn't mean I don't sing. What, you don't think so? You Talent's think? very relative. It so I think a be. lot of people don't sing because they think they can't <laughs> sing. And I think most people can and some sing. some people know they can't sing. Can sing fine. It's just not everybody's going to sing like on a microphone for everybody to hear. Yes. But I think a lot of times people don't sing well because they don't sing out. And if you don't sing out, That's then, what you accuse me of. Then you don't sing well. Like even me, if I try to sing really quietly, like I'm not going to hit all the notes. But if I sing it out, then I can Sing it out them. like you mean it, right? So. Let that lion out. Anyway. <laughs> We're going to roar. That's right. <laughs> Let that roar. Anyway, well, the, the thing is the Bible commands us to sing, and it's not a matter of whether or not you're good at singing or that's your thing. You know, some people are like, I don't really care about singing. Well, it's in the Bible a whole lot, so I think it's for everybody, not just people with they the They were gift. commanded to do it. Right. right. And yeah. it's not a matter of what I feel like it or mm -hmm. not. It's you do it. Right. So yeah. this is God, God, you know, God says he, he, he inhabits the praise of his people. Yep. Right. That's yeah. a song. I know the song. <laughs> um, Psalm 47, 6. It says, sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises unto our King, sing praises. So when I saw this note, I was like, it can't possibly say that, right? <laughs> it out of context. It it, so I read it, and I was like, okay, it makes sense. But just uh, that one verse, I'm like, sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises unto our King, sing praises. If you don't get it, I think we're supposed to sing praises. <laughs> and and here's a here's what I like. Now this is just a, a mic, so you guys might disagree with me, but we talk about praise and worship. Now, obviously, if you're a studier of the Word of God, you know that worship has nothing to what well, I shouldn't say has nothing to do with singing. It's not the time we go to church and we sing. That is what we call worship. 
it can be worship, but worship is is an activity that we do. It's our daily lives. How we how we live right. is is a worship to God. So I like to use the the phrase praise because the we looked this up earlier and praise is in the Bible I think two hundred fifty times or something like that. And worship's actually in the Bible 100, 110 times something like that. It's in there way more, and we are to praise Him. Praise Him. Yes, we are to worship Him, but in our singing, that is what we are doing. We are praising our Father. We yes. are praising our God in many different ways. So sing praises to God. Sing praises. Psalm 96.1. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. That's a song right there. <laughs> I can't help but think of the song. Another psalm that we do sing. That, well, that one is word for word pretty much right there, and that was one of those 7 so when people are like, "That's you just sing that one, well, that's a psalm. Uh, take it up with David. Uh, <laughs> now, he didn't sing it 11 times, but we know that one be- yeah. by heart because of this. someone put it to, to right. music, yeah. and we sang it and sang it and sing unto the Lord a new song. There you go, babe. Sing unto the Lord. <laughs> sing it out. All right, so that, that's about as best as you're going to get from me. Well, right about now is about the time we're going to take a break. And we're going to come back and we're going to talk about our week and a game with Abigail. And I do not know what she has, but I think it has something to do with humming and doo-doo and we got to guess. Do I lose? Thank you for listening. This is the Mike Charleston Show. We are back, and this is the game segment, and well, actually, we didn't check the email. We forgot to check the email. Oopsies. Oops. Um, maybe we'll do that in the break. But uh, anyway, this is uh, what we usually do is talk about our week and just anything that's been going on in our lives, and then Abigail has a, a game that she's going to play in which we don't have a clue what it is, but it has something to do with singing, I'm guessing. That's all I'm guessing. It's a pretty good guess. So mm-hmm. anything. what, Babe, some of the listeners are curious what we've done. Uh, the only thing I could think of is Lydia had a birthday. She did, and we got to do something really fun. Blast. <laughs> yeah, we went hiking. And uh, if you know me, I'm not like a hiker guy. Um, I, I, it's just you're walking in the woods. I don't understand. I like hiking, but... I was not up to the trek with y'all after no, being sick. No, no, no. It, it's it's fine. It, it, this particular place that we go hiking. Now this is Louisiana, and Louisiana doesn't have hills. Like we're we're literally flat. Well, but as you get up into Mississippi, uh, right about the border of Louisiana, it does get a little bit hilly, and there's actually some waterfalls. Believe it or not, at this yeah. place, there's yeah. ten waterfalls. Some are just a trickle, but ten. Ten, they say. They say ten. I thought it was seven. Uh, I don't remember. No, you got us doubting ourselves. No, no, no. I think you're right because there's one. If you take, if you looked at it, there's a one map where it's this long trek that you can take. Mm -hmm. That probably I've never done that one. Either have we. And so we're walking, and we 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 visited three waterfalls, and the kids go play in the the waterfall and and enjoy, and it's a fun time for them. And we got to sit on the rocks and talk, which is fun time for me. But I like viewing the the view. I like like my perfect vacation would go to like North Carolina, Air, Arkansas, get a cabin, and just watch the sunrise, sunset. I don't want to go walking in the woods. You just would want to sit on the porch, yeah, and watch it. Yeah. I'd want to get down in there, like go find Why? trails because you can see it from other angles. I don't know. It's just nice. You just Pretty. walk in. And seeing the same trees over and over. It's not the same trees. It's different trees. It's, it's just I'm going to not... have to get you to North Carolina and take you to Pickens Nose. Pickens Nose. Uh, that doesn't sound like a good place. <laughs> Pickens Nose. Uh, at least it's not nose picking. Well, we went to <laughs> Tallulah Gorge, and he was not impressed with that either. It wasn't that I wasn't impressed. I just, we, we walked up one hill to look at it, walk down, walk up another hill to look at the same thing. But we could see it from the whole other side. Like we could see across the gorge where we were going to be once we walked that I know. far. And I, and then we did it again. And I'm like, I get it. It's a gorge. It's a hole in the ground. I get it. <laughs> but uh, it's just not my thing. But Lydia likes to go hike. Everyone likes to go to the Tunica Hills. And so we went there and walked around. And it's fun. I, I, I like to tease people, but I still don't get it. But it's fun. It's fine. Other than that, we, we really didn't do that much. You took out Abby and uh, Jeremiah. Yeah, we did do that. We um, I, So 
didn't have a busy week either per se. Um, uh, Joshua is with Kate and Sharon, so uh, in Florida. Yeah, in Florida. So I had the opportunity to mow some more grass. <laughs> so we did mow grass, but um, uh, yeah, we took uh, Abby. And That's exciting, Jeremiah. guys. Chuck's mowing grass. So. <laughs> yeah, Abby and uh, Jeremiah out for dinner the other night, and that was a very enjoyable time. We enjoyed that very much. And then um, the big news of the week for us, though. Oh, big news! Big news. Alert! Found out alert! I uh, found out yesterday that uh, Rebecca and Enos are expecting their first baby. Nice. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So yeah. Good to be Grandpa awesome. again, so yeah. that, yes, that is that deserves a cheer. That right? does deserve a cheer. Oh, that's <laughs> well, exciting. Uh, so they got about mm, seven more months, eight more months before something, something along that line. I didn't okay. ask how far they uh, they found out on their one year anniversary. Sweet, so when they were out. So that's, that's cool. Nice. That's cool. That's, well, that's good news. That is good news. Congratulations, Enos and Rebecca, if you're watching, but you're probably not. But uh, <laughs> but thanks. Uh, that's that's good news. Not thanks. I, mean, I don't know why I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Chuck, for telling us. <laughs> and Larry, we got Larry. What are you doing? Yeah, we got some Larry news, and I know everyone out there seems to think that Larry has been booted from the show. <laughs> Maybe. We no. have some new contract <laughs> negotiations yes. going on. Yeah, they finally sold their house, and it looks like we thought maybe this weekend they'd be moving, but it doesn't seem like they're in a big hurry. So they're going to come maybe the next weekend. I don't I don't know, but it's, it is literally upon us. Yes, it is. They're actually going to move. They, yeah. they are coming. So for those that wondered, is this ever going to happen? Hi. I'm still Larry. <laughs> he's still coming. So he, he's he's on his way. So, all right. So Abigail is yeah, with Abigail, us. Abigail, what am I going to lose at today? <laughs> and now it's time for the time with All right. And Abigail is... If you're watching on YouTube, she gets her own camera. Joshua set this up. You can actually see Joshua in the background, but he's not going to wave. No, he's still... There he goes. He's, yeah. he's waving. Okay. <laughs> All right, Abigail, what do you have for us to embarrass us this time? Well, I don't think it'll be super embarrassing. And I think you all do pretty well in this one. Oh, good, because Chuck can't take another one. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, what do we, what's, the, what's the rules? So it's kind of a version of Name That Tune. Name, I can okay. name that tune in two, two notes. It's similar to that, but... But you don't all... even know how that game is played. No, I don't, actually. Okay. <laughs> I have an idea. This but... is her version. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have some, and then you guys have some in front of you. Okay, and these cards that we can't look at. Yeah, you can't look at them yet. I'm okay. going to start with some of mine. You're just going to, on your turn, you're going to hum them, and other people are going to guess them. But I'm going to go ahead, and you guys are all going to have a chance to guess them. You're going to hum or do 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 or whatever that's called. do 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 Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start that off, and you I guys... I don't know if humming works. Mm -hmm. She's not going to I guess hum. it works. Yeah, hum will work. Okay. I mean, humming works. I just don't know what to call the doo-doo thing or whatever. <laughs> doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with the first one. It's just whoever says it first. Whoever says it first. Yeah. First. Okay, that's that. All right, here's the okay. first one. <laughs> When we all get to heaven. Yep. All right. Joshua's going to have to bring down that music because is that uh, distracting? it is very distracting. <laughs> we'll have to bring that back up after we do the doo doos because <laughs> I, can't, I can't hear it really well. That's my excuse, at least. All right. So we've got one there. The next one. Sweet hour prayer. Yes. Boom. <laughs> Ding. That's me. All right. Ding. I didn't get one. I know because we were worried about the background okay. music. Sorry. You get it. You get it. Mike was humming along. It was distracting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one. It's so sweet. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Chuck. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. And I'll hit far away. Oh, the Oregon Cross. Cross. I think yeah, I said it. I, I think you said it first, Dad. Oh, but... re instant replay? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have instant replay, but... All right, let's try this one. Da, 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 my Savior did bleed. Da, uh, my, uh, Alas, and did my Savior yeah. bleed. Da, 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 da. At the cross. At the oh, cross. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. She's giving wrong answers. Hey, I gave the right one, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, you get a... All right. This one is pretty easy. Oh. So you guys should get it right away. The other ones away. weren't easy? Not that they weren't, but Amazing this one's Grace. super easy. 
Did I get it right? <laughs> that is right. Okay, go ahead. Do it again. You don't get I'm to say it that. Now. I'm going to shuffle it in. Okay. <laughs> bang, bang. All right. Da, 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 Beat da, out my vision. Da. Yep. All Very right. good. Da, 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 Amazing da, Grace. Yes. Yes. Bang. And the last one. Let's see. I strength the data small. Child of weakness. Watch and pray. Jesus paid it all. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you get it. All right. All right. So that's all I have up here. And now for the second part of it. Okay. Second part. Is you guys have them in front of you, and you're going to have to do it, and the other two people will guess. Oh, Ooh, this is gonna so go who long. goes first? We're going to start with Mr. Chuck this time. We should have just done like, like a lyric, and then we have to figure out what song it came from. Mm. But anyway, I go ahead. I thought about doing that one too, but... All right, Chuck, are you going to hum? you going to do? I'll do. Or are you going to la-la? Uh, I know you can't handle the hum, so uh, we'll I can hum. Da, 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 Great is like faithfulness. Yes. 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 You guys are going to get to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone listens like, Great is like faithfulness. <laughs> oh, right. I go next? Yes. Oh, I got to do the do. Okay. Oh, we can't see yeah. the answer. Yeah, we can't see it. <laughs> uh, do we have to do it from the beginning? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if I know it from the beginning. Wow. Um, well, then... I'm just going to go what I know. Okay. Do, 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 do. It is well. well. Yep. Oh, I think Chuck got it. Am I right or am I, I right or am I right? I think so. Probably at least high. <laughs> <laughs> See, how does that one start? Oh, this is my turn. Do, do, do. Um, okay. One piece do, like a river. Do, like. Yeah. Ready? Uh, sure, we're ready. Do, 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 do. When I go by the way. Trust and obey. Because yes. there's no Bang. other way. Back to Chuck? Yes. My turn. Okay. He can't get this one right. I don't think right. how it starts either. <laughs> I know. So uh, uh, just do the chorus if you... It's not coming to me. Uh-oh. We need some help. Come back. All right. Come, well, sh- shuffle. Do the next one. I'll shuffle and do the next one. That'll work. I'll start with the chorus because you'll get it better that's, that way. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Da, 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 da. Da 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 da. Mm. da 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 How great okay, that art. How great that art. Yep. Yep. It's your turn. Oh, it's my turn. How, how's it my turn? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Once again, I don't know how this starts. Oh, yes, I do. I think I do. Um, do, 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 do. Holy, holy, holy. Do. Am I doing the right one? Is it holy, holy? Yeah, it is. Okay, I, yes. I, I didn't feel like I was doing the right thing, but Sarah got it either way. <laughs> if I was doing the right one, holy, holy, holy. Okay. Do 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 do. My violin is drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Uh, sinners plunge beneath the. It'll lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. What's it called? Um. <laughs> The Dying Thief. No. <laughs> We're saying everything but the first verse, yeah, right? Yeah, actual, that's what it is. Uh, there is a fountain filled with blood. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay, that was a tough one. Are you out? You no, got I have one. One. There's, still one. There's one left for each of you. Chuck okay. has his heart to me. Left. Okay, have you figured it out yet? I think I got the chorus. Okay. Okay. It's a hard one. Uh, let's see. I'm going to get it right. I don't have it. You don't have no, it? No, I don't. Do you want to switch cards? Sure. Did what? you already look no. at it? You already looked at it. You already looked at it. <laughs> Come on, man. Do you know what it is, Abigail? I don't remember which ones Do I gave. Do you want to give it to Abigail? Here you go. And then we'll just guess. Yeah, I'll go try. Oh, this one. Oh. We did this for the shindig last year. Oh, did Chuck. We? I think so. Yeah, I can't get the tune in my All head, right. though. Here it goes. Da, 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 Near the cross. Yeah. Yep. Near. Yep. Ke- 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 uh, yeah. That's one of my favorites. That's your turn. All right, my turn. These are all upside down. Oh, this is one of my favorites too. Uh, how does it start? 
When I survey the wondrous Yeah, I did the wrong version. I I was going to say, it's not quite the hymn, but it works. (laughs) When I survey... How does the hymn go? (laughs) When I survey, do I get a point for that? (laughs) No. Okay, your last one. How marvelous! That's not what it's called. That's not oh, the how name marvelous! Of it. it is That's how marvelous. It's called. Dun, dun, it's called how. Dun, dun. Oh. It's called how marvelous. It's it's in parentheses. It, I know it's about two names, but that's it's, not one of them. Yeah, it's actually do, not. Do what is that? Do do. <laughs> it's been my favorite do, hymn do. for a while. I know. Uh, how marvelous! <laughs> how wonderful! How does it start? I know how the second verse starts. <laughs> how does the second verse with glory? When, uh, when with the ransom in glory. That's right, the second one verse. First, I was trying to think of first, first verse. When does it start with the win? No, I. I stand amazed. Uh, yeah, I stand bang, amazed. Bang. Wow, that was that embarrassing. was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> oh, that was a little bit easier. I think did Chuck get some right no. at least. Yeah, you got some right. Yeah, you got some right. I didn't hear a lot of this. Am I right or am I right or am I right? Because that was Chuck's right one. But is that all we have? Is that all the, the questions? That, that's, all the, that's all the songs for today. All <laughs> right. Well, I don't know if we have an email, but if we do, we'll be right back with the email after this. Thank you for listening to The Mike Charleston Show. <laughs> we are back. Obviously, we have to edit that out. Uh, we, are, we are back. Woo-hoo. And uh, we are going to be finishing up the praise, the 10 reasons to sing to the Lord. And I hope you enjoyed that little break there. It was a fun little game of humdinger, I guess we'll call it. Thank even you. though we were doing doo-doos a lot. do 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 And uh, that was DC Talk. Anyway, so let's carry on. Why don't we go ahead and just continue on? We got five more, and the sixth one here is strengthening yeah, you spir- spiritually. Strengthening you spiritually. So, uh, six, ten reasons to sing to the Lord, strengthening you spiritually. And you have Acts sixteen, right. Paul and Silas singing in the prison. Yeah. Now, this one, I was gonna, we were gonna not do because I thought we don't necessarily know their motive for singing, uh, but why don't you tell the story? Well, this is when Paul and Silas were in prison, and so about, I think it says about midnight, they started singing praises to God, and while they sang, um, an earthquake happened. An earthquake happened. So, and I, I don't the, think they caused the earthquake no, by singing. No, no, but, but uh, obviously God wanted them out of there, so yeah. he got them out. And obviously and, it strengthened them spiritually. I, I think that is obvious, that when you're singing... It does edify yourself right. when, when you when you're lifting yourself up when you're down. Now I, we don't know necessarily their motives, but I'm going to assume they weren't in the best place going in jail. No, you would think. I mean, the, the jail is used to be it. fun, right? Right. right. So uh, surely, yeah, you know, they're there. They're doing what we talked about last time. If you want to be joyful, sing. That's right. But they were probably weren't very joyful to be there. And we actually heard a story as we were researching this of uh, missionaries, other ministers that were put in prison. And what do they do in prison? They were tied their, ch- their, their chains. The chains can make music, right? They could bang the chains. Uh, okay. And so they would sing one of those 7-Eleven songs. I forget which song it was, but um, it was, this is the day, clink, clink. This is the day, clank, clank. And they would use the chains yeah. and they would sing. And it was a way to uplift their spirits right. because they're yeah. not in a good place. But anytime you sing, it can definitely strengthen you. As your way. Now you have Jude one twenty. Uh, this one jumped in there. It says, "But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost." And praying this in the is Holy just Ghost. Talking about how we're supposed to build ourselves up in the faith, and I think singing is one of the ways we can do that. And praying, obviously. And praying. That yeah. was the verse. But yeah, singing does. It does encourage you. And now, if you don't believe that, I don't know what else to say. But try it. You know, yeah, try singing, try it. and, it, and See what it does. It lifts you up a little bit. All right. So number seven, we have it changes your attitude. All right. So, babe, why don't you go ahead with this one? You like this one, huh? Well, I put this one because I know from experience that it's true. And when the kids were little, I would we would always sing while we did dishes, and we still do that some. But mm-hmm. 
So we'd, we'd always sing, but there were days that I remember that for whatever reason I was down, either not feeling well or for what for whatever reason, I didn't feel like singing. And one of the kids, you know, little as they were, would, would come and be like, Mommy, what song do you want to sing? And of course, I'm, I didn't want to say, I don't want to sing right now. So I would just pick a song and start singing. And I would find that as I would sing, my attitude changed. Yep. And, you know, I didn't feel like it at all. And then all of a sudden, it's like I was having a great time singing with them. Uh, absolutely. And, and that's the other thing about kids. If you're raising up your kids in a, in a good way, in a godly way, we don't let our kids stay down. You know, there's this modern movement of let your kids just feel how they feel. And I'm like, no, we don't want them to feel bad. We don't, we don't let them to stay in a bad place. Now, you can't just change. They stop feeling bad. You, you feel bad. But there are ways that you can do to make them not feel bad. That's a whole other subject. But they are kind of innocent and pure. they don't have the burdens of life, right? Yes. They don't have the... Okay, is the, the burdens of financial burdens, the, the providing for them. They just, they're, they're living. Mm-hmm. So they want to sing. Yeah. Let's sing a song, even if it's a silly song, you know, and you're like, oh, I don't feel like it, but okay. And you'd be surprised a half hour later, you know, you're singing a spoonful of sugar, it makes the medicine go down, <laughs> you know, and you're like, whatever, and you're happy. Yeah. And it does affect your attitude. I think yeah. this is, a, is a, a big one. I think if you are a person who struggles with your attitude, whether your negative attitude or you not just complaining, but more of a, you're kind of downcast. Mm-hmm. You're, 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 you're negative in the way that your look, outlook on life. You're always just downcast. Try singing. And, and at first that might feel awkward, so just just probably put, play some, press and play on and listening to music and yeah. sing along with it. And then you can try it without it and just sing along with it. Yeah. It'll really change your, your spirit. I remember we were talking about worship. You were bringing up a book you were reading with your kids. It was a few months ago, okay. and I think it was A.W. Tozer, and the, the concept of, of worship, and Michael Thornton brought up a question. He had a question about it, and we got talking about how we praise the Lord, different ways that we do things to encourage one another, and I just told him, like, look, I just... I put on some music and just listen at work, and it, it changes, and he tried it, and he was like, it was actually amazing. You know, it actually worked. He didn't. He just didn't really think about that. It would change it that much. And that's just listening to music. That's just listening, right? Which is which is great too, right? But um, I was talking to Jeannie on the way over here, and she was saying that you know, just talking about the subject for tonight, it's kind of bouncing it off of her. Mm-hmm. So she had, and you know, we'll listen. We do listen to music in the home a lot, while well, uh, especially with the girls uh, when they're working in the kitchen or sure, what have you. Sure. But uh, she also said, you know, after a while, it can get to be a little bit much just mm-hmm. listening sure, to it. Sure. Because mm-hmm. On for a while, so um, turning it off and actually singing, she, she said, "You know, actually, it's better. It's yes, just, I enjoy it more." I agree. It, it's, sometimes, just especially with some of the more modern stuff, it's a lot of noise, and sometimes you want to just kind of get rid of the noise. Right. And I, I and I like some of the modern stuff. I'm not complaining about it, but like you say, after an hour, you're just like, "Okay, I need a break," mm-hmm. and then just to sit there and sing it. We sing most of our songs a cappella, right? You guys, when you're singing, yeah, because yeah. mainly because we don't have speakers uh, up yeah, here. Yeah, at this point, we don't <laughs> so, have anything that was other than a phone, and that's really not a good speaker. Yeah, our, so. our Mac Mini speakers are terrible, and uh, we don't have actually <laughs> speakers, so it's easier to go a cappella. But yeah. change your attitude. So singing to the Lord, it gets your focus off yourself, yeah. your your problems. And it, it goes to the one who can fix your problems. Yeah. And it's the creator of the universe. I mean, I've told the kids this many times. You go out at night and just look at the stars. And especially with this James T. Kirk uh, telescope or whatever it's called out there. What's the new telescope? I don't know the name of it. You know either. what I'm talking uh-huh. about, though? That, that, that new telescope that's out there. They can see even further. And it's just wonderful. I'm like, that's, that's amazing to me. This is our God. And he's created all this. And what else could we do except for... Yeah, it's how could I keep from singing? You know, just by looking at his his majesty and the wonder wonder of it all. It's just like, ah, I want to sing. And maybe we'll get that in a little bit. I don't know, but maybe I'm jumping ahead. 
but try making up your own verses. Try. <laughs> Jeannie loves doing that. Yeah, she does. She really <laughs> okay. Does. Yeah. And it's good. I like, even if it's something simple, just one little line or something that God is good, you know, I don't know, just make up something. And that, because that means something to you. And uh, use that. So, anyway. So, number eight, uh, we have listed here for 10 reasons to sing is it encourages others. Encourages others. Okay. So, what are we doing when we sing together, right? Well, when we sing together, we're <clears throat> preaching to ourselves. So like we said in the last one, it changes your attitude. So when I start singing, it changes my attitude, and I'm, I'm, telling, I'm reminding myself about things about God. But then it also reminds others. And so I find that it has great effect on other people when I'm singing. So I think that's very important. And obviously, praising God for what He's done. It also A- absolutely. Is no, and this is, this, this is good because... <laughs> Preaching is is preaching, right? And sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's not so good. It, it, it just depends. But singing, it can be good and bad too. But but when you're singing, you're sharing with one another. Yeah. And they've done studies where people who sing together, like chorales and and um, uh, not uh, choirs, mm-hmm. they they there's something about singing to get binds you together. Like there's some kind of unity there, yeah, especially if you're that. singing like four part harmonies mm-hmm. and things like that. You're working together and you're singing. It's very important. So this encourages. When I listen to songs, so if I'm listening to a new song, I'm listening to it. I don't know it. Uh, just like one recently that you just showed me, it's encouraging to me because well, I don't know it. I want to hear what other people are where they're at in their lives. That's why I want to encourage young people to write some of their own stuff. Mm. Where are you spiritually? Where are you with your concept of God? And you know, let, let's let's express that in, in, in song, and even if it's a, a short verse or if it's a long song or, or whatever. But I'm curious where people are and how they express themselves in a certain way. So Chris Tomlin came out with a new one, and I'm not the biggest Chris Tomlin fan, but I like him enough. And it's a, it's a good song. It was It's a fine song. Not one of my favorites, but you guys really like it. But listening to it for the first time, it is encouraging. It is like, okay, God is holy. I forget, the, the song is uh, uh, holy. Holy forever. Holy forever. Okay. And it is. It's true. It's good. It's, it's a good song. It, it, it reminds us. It, uh, it's, it's a message, and yeah. it's encouraging. So. Yeah, I, I haven't heard that one. No, nope. um, well, we did I, at church did Sunday. We do it? Yeah, <laughs> well, I didn't hear Chris there. No, no, <laughs> yeah, you didn't hear him. You they didn't hear version. his version. <laughs> you heard it our version. Uh, yeah, so we did do that one Sunday. Yeah, we yeah, did. I remember right. that. But I'm not having. I haven't heard that one. I. I Used to, I would actually listen to a good bit of music um, on the way to work and back. Sure. But I've gotten bored where I'll listen to podcasts Podcast now. Right. So sorry. I don't hear as many. <laughs> no, I got him to listen to some podcasts. And uh, sorry, but, you know, I have the freedom where I can listen to podcasts and music because all day long I'm just a, a common laborer. And so I have the freedom to listen to a lot of stuff right. when I'm working. And, and so I, sometimes I listen to a lot of audio, but then there's times where I'm like, okay, it's time to learn some new songs. Uh, sometimes I'm just turn it all off and just start singing to myself because I don't sing out loud at work. That'd be weird. <laughs> all right. Well, well before okay. you go off the before encouraging others, the, another thing that we do is we'll oftentimes, after a song, talk about it. And okay. talk about like what, what that song mean? means to me, oh, really? or what do you think this this song is trying to say? Like I'll ask the kids sometimes, and so that can be very encouraging. Well, the kids too. will have questions mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah, some things we take for granted, like Rock of Ages. You were saying mm-hmm. the 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 question was well, actually the kids didn't have a question. You had a question. I had the question. The question was uh, where the the line says, "Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side, which flowed, be of sin the double cure." The double cure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, safe. And you were like the double cure. cure. What's the double cure? Cure, and and so we talked about that a little bit, and right. and you looked it up and said, okay, there's a whole little thing on that. So yeah, it's a big topic. Right. So did you get the question about um, and he walks with me and he talks with me? <laughs> Who's Andy? Who's Andy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. No, we didn't get that one. <laughs> but I think talking about the songs and talking about what, why do you like this song? Yes. And me telling them or them telling me like what, how that song ministered to them. No, that's that, a good that point. Can be really that's interesting. I don't know that I've ever done that. I may have oh. to try that. Yeah, well, because yeah, it's inter- certain songs, like there's a song that maybe I don't like or you don't like, and you're like, oh, I'm tired of the song. And then someone's like, oh man, that, that's my song right now. Right. And you're like, really? Yeah. 
Like, why? <laughs> but for, yeah. for whatever reason, at that moment, it, it's really hit them. And that's happened to me where, yeah, I really didn't like that song when I first heard it. And then months go by and I hear it again. But because of where I'm at or what's going on, I hear it and I'm like, I like that song. Okay. You know, it's kind of weird like that. Yeah. But everyone's in a different place and mm-hmm. not everyone likes the same songs. No, but when your kids are little, you can have a lot of influence because I'll tell them why, I, why, why I like a song. <laughs> And for years to come, like they're like, oh, that's a really good song, yeah. and I'll you know mm-hmm. I'll even hear them tell other people, well, that's because it you know it explains this about God or whatever. So it's it's a good way to influence your kids. That is. Yep, and you had a little proud moment there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so number nine, uh, we have helps to unite us together as one body. Well, th- I think we talked about yeah, this. Yeah, you were just talking in, about in, that a little bit. You know, that science now backs this up. Singing in a group triggers the release of serotonin and oxytocin and uh, the, the bonding hormones, the good vibes in your brains that when you're singing together as a group. Yeah. And I don't think it's just meaning like singing in a church so much, even though that's part of it, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's not necessarily the size of the group. Right. I mean, you could be, I think the people, when they get around like the piano, if you've seen, you know, those Mm -hmm. things and someone's playing the piano and everyone else is singing and they get in their parts, that does something. Yeah. Yeah. And and actually, maybe in the bigger crowd, maybe it does something because I know uh, I've been in big crowds where we're all singing and there's something about it. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, mm-hmm. I know that I, you know I enjoy being able to lead music and sing with with y'all at the, at the different shindigs and things sure. that we've been able to do. And there's times where I'm there and I'm facing everybody yep. else, yep. and it's just like I can't sing anymore. It's right. just overwhelming. Yep. And, uh, I'll, and you're I, hearing I, them just, all sing at yeah, you, and you know, especially at um, uh, at the shindig in Mississippi, you're sitting there and there, there's something on there. You look at the back and there's a big picture of Christ on the wall. Yep. Yep. There is. It just you know it just Hits stops you. you. And yeah. that, that's great. That could be a problem when you're leading. You know what? Live sometimes. <laughs> that's why we have good. a number of singers, so it's fine. But it is it is true. So it does help us to become together, right? Right. It definitely unites us. So speaking of science, they now know that singing what? So this was some of the things that we found out as we're studying. And you take this with a grain of salt because it's science, right? And, and I know, are we supposed to make science in the Bible? Eh, whatever. But these are, some, these are some things that they have found out in their studies. And I found them very interesting that the scriptures point these things out many, many, many years ago. But uh, so what, what do we have here, Chuck? You got the first one is that singing makes you happy. Makes you happy. So we spent money on research to find that out. I know, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who doesn't like, really? know that? That's, a, that's one of those duh ones. <laughs> they don't dance to, you know, because it makes you sad. Yeah. <laughs> you know. um, you have reduces stress and anxiety and depression. That's kind of why it makes you happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you have, so if you're constantly depressed and, and stressed and anxious, Try singing. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's easy for us to say because we sing all the time. We're a singing family, but try it. Yeah, the next one you have here is that singing calms your heart rate. Yeah, it calms your heart rate. I don't know. If I'm singing in front of people, my heart rate's going <laughs> fast. <laughs> so uh, I do not like singing in front of people. But uh, now this one's interesting. It increases pain tolerance. I have I, when no I read idea. that in the note, I was like, hmm. Yeah, that's what they say. I don't know that say. I want to try it. Yeah, I don't want to try it. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but interesting. Maybe that's why they sing in prison. Well, it means you can take more pain. Well, I know that. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know what that like. So was. I wonder if any women have tried that in labor, like just start hey, singing. There you go. Yeah. You could, you could start something, out. babe. Uh, it boosts your immune system. I can see that. That's actually. interesting. Okay, you know, I could actually, I could really see that. Uh, but I mean, if your if your body is working in harmony and and singing produces yep. that. Those good chemicals that yeah. move throughout your body, then yeah, it, I could actually definitely see that it could boost your immune system. And the last one that's not on here, but I read it, it makes you look younger. And I'm like, oh, well, that's that's my wife. So yeah, anyway. <laughs> well, I just find it interesting that science has all this to say about singing. And it's like the Bible tells us again and again and again and again it's to sing. It's like God knew this long before we figured it out. Right. And was it for our good? Like you asked me at lunchtime, was is all this for God or is it for us? And I'm like, well, it's all for God. I mean, there's nothing. Or actually, your question was, does I forget, I forget exactly how the question went, but something about does, does God need this? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, of course he doesn't need it. We need it more. Just like when I was comparing someone not being thankful, mm-hmm. you know, it's giving, saying thank you to me if I did something. Right. Do I need it? No. I'm going to move on with my life, but right. it actually does something for that person. And praising God, does God need our praise? Hey, the rocks will cry out if we don't. Right. 
the he doesn't need us to praise, but it is good for us to glorify him, right. which moves us into number ten. Yeah. yeah, number ten is glorify. It glorifies God, and He is worthy. Yes, I, this one's the last one, and we don't have as much time. But this is the most important one. Obviously, all of the other ones are all put into this one. Really, yeah, right? pretty much because He <clears throat> He is worthy. And so, if we don't feel like singing, if we don't think we're good at singing, if you know for whatever reason holds us back, it's like we should sing because He is worthy of our praise. So, yeah. what what did you put here? Oh, I have what we enjoy in praise. Is not for our preference, but it's for God's glory. So some people are like, oh, well, I don't like to sing this, or I don't like this version, I don't like whatever, and it's like it's not really about what we like or we don't like. It's yeah, all it about for the glory of God. I mean, it is for His glory. Well, yes. But yeah, if I don't like it, it's not about me once again, right. but it is about His glory. Uh, so Psalm 22, 3. It says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. I think Chuck... Mentioned that one earlier. Yeah. So God does inhabit our praise. Yes, He does. Yeah, so He doesn't need it, but He definitely wants it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah. And it's yeah. good for us to give it, you know, like give thanksgiving, to be grateful, to be thankful, to praise Him, because He is worthy of it. Yeah. He mm-hmm. is worthy of it all. So going back to Ephesians to Colossians, uh, ask the question next is, uh, so then uh, what should we sing? Yeah, do we decide or do, does the Bible decide? And I, I kind of asked you about that, like, why did you word it like that? And you're like, well, but the Bible tells us what to sing. And it right. tells us to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That is going back to Colossians and Ephesians. Yep. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Now, psalms, we understand what psalms are. We can go turn to the book of psalms. Hymns, yep. I have no idea what hymns are. Uh, I know what hymns are today. <laughs> but in, in um, the context of when Paul is writing this, what in the world were the hymns? You know, that, that would be my question. Like, what were the hymns back then? That's an interesting question. That is crazy. Yeah. And spiritual songs. So I know a lot of people in this world that are just like, we sing hymns only. Well, you're not a very biblical Christian <laughs> because it says to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And whether you don't like some of the spiritual songs, I get. You know, maybe they're not doctrinally correct. Well, you can find some. There, there's some out there. Make some up right. then. Uh, but you should sing all these psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs because they are that, that is what we're supposed to be singing. Yeah. And then we've got two verses or two sets of scriptures, more than one, more than one, two verses right. um, about um, God. You know, while we're singing for God's glory, Psalm nine, one through two it says, "I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high." Yeah, and you notice how rejoice and sing, they're yeah. usually tied together yeah. in, in, when, in the Bible. When you look up rejoice and sing, they're usually two peas in a pod there. But yes, this is our, I will praise thee, the whole heart, yeah. and show his marvelous work, because he is. So Psalm uh, 63, 1 through 5. It says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. That's funny. I, I thought of a number of songs just, <laughs> just, just in those few verses. So why, why that verse? Why did you put that verse in there? Well, because it said sing psalms, and that was one of my favorite that talks about praising God. And I was like, I'll put that one in. Uh, there's plenty. There's that was the other bunch. thing. That there were so many verses on uh, singing, right? We we couldn't do them all. There's no. there's so many good ones out there that if you just go and search and, and read through them, it is powerful yeah. uh, of who our God is. Do we know God? And when you know God, you want to express in some kind of way. Th- think about your wife. Maybe not your wife right now, because some of you may not like your wife. But you know, think about when you're first courting. And when you, you're first in a relationship and, you know, that, that first moment of, hey, I love this lady or I love this man. And what are some of the things that you wanted to do? You know, you wanted to express yourself in words, maybe in singing. Now, some, some people were like, well, I didn't sing. Well, you, you played love songs or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but that's what we do with God. And people are like, oh, I don't want to sing love songs to Jesus. You know, like, well, why not? He's the lover of my soul, and I want to respond back. You know, mm-hmm. it's because he is the most worthy person. I say person. You know, the most worthy being, personhood. You know, in this in this world, to, for if anyone's going to sing a song, I would want to sing a song about him. 
You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. anything that we do, we do it for His glory. So anyway, maybe I'm just I'm just going off. So, so now I go home and sing a song to your wife. And That's when right. she asks why, you say, I was listening to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope all you guys out there love your wives, and I hope all your wives love your husbands. But I'm just ready for my song. I, there you go. I got, I got a song, and uh, I got a song ready for you. And it goes something like this. I'm singing. I'm in a store, and I'm singing. <laughs> I'm in a store, and I'm singing. Hey! <laughs> so, so if you're in a store, maybe do that. Um, anyway, okay, so that is singing to the Lord. And I think next week we're, we're going to be talking about just songs in general, music in general, right? Maybe not. I don't we're know. working on it, but soon we're going to be talking about music in general. A lot of people have issues with music, and we're going to try to delve into that a little bit more. But let's recap this week. We had the 10 reasons to sing to the Lord. Chuck, take it Number from Number one helps us to remember. Sounds good. Let's go through these. <laughs> Number two, singing produces joy. It does. Number three, it helps us to be Christ-minded. Absolutely. Number four, it can affirm solid doctrines. If it's good. If yep. it's good doctrine. Right. Bad doctrine. Yeah. Number five, it obeys God's command. He Absolutely. commands us to sing. Yep. Number six, it strengthens you spiritually. Absolutely. Seven, it changes your attitude. Make you smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, it encourages others. That's true. Yep. It definitely can. Yep. You know, unless you're not singing very well. Then... <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> no. Number nine, it helps to unite us together as one body. Yep. And number 10, the most important reason is it glorifies, glorifies God. God and He is worthy. Absolutely. Yeah. This is the 10 reasons that we came up with for singing. So I hope you enjoyed the podcast, the show. I'm sorry, the show. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you have questions or maybe you have some other reasons, go ahead and email us at talk at fellowshipofbelievers.org and we'll love to read those reasons on the air. But until then, we will see you next week. Hi, I'm Joshua Charleston, the producer for The Mike Charleston Show. If you enjoyed listening to the show, please help us spread the word by liking, subscribing, sharing, leaving a review, or just tell a friend. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you'd like to be a part of the show, please email us at talk at fellowshipofbelievers.org. We look forward to hearing from you. We hope you enjoyed listening to The Mike Charleston Show. The Mike Charleston Show.